Hello, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to take a look at using C Sharp in Godot. Yes, the time has finally almost come where you can use C Sharp and the Godot game engine together. And I say almost because, well, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. The official release does not have um, C Sharp support. However, the master branch on GitHub does. You may recall earlier this week, I did a video on building Godot from source code. Walk through all the tools you need to install, scons, Python, etc., to build Godot yourself. And there's a reason for that, is because in order to test out C-sharp development, we are going to have to build it ourselves. Now, I'm not gonna go through all that again, because I have done this video already, uh, but I will link that process down below, and I will go through the entire process. I'll uh, pause during the uh, compilation times, etc. but I will be walking through this process step step so don't worry if you haven't seen this video and you don't have any problems with building Godot from source you don't need to watch it but if you do again I will link it down below so the cool thing is yeah the Godot game engine announced that C sharp support is officially in there uh, if you're watching this sometime in the future it may already be in the alpha release or in the stable full release uh, in which case you don't need to build from source anymore but as of today you still have to uh, so without further ado let's go ahead and build it from source um, I'm not going through the tooling again so if you don't know how to set up your build environment check that earlier video I walked through you know getting your compiler getting git configured getting all the different pieces you need to follow along to this tutorial configured but what we need right now is the address to the Godot repository on github and once we have that let's fire up your visual studio command prompt I'm gonna build this for 64-bit using visual studio 2017 oops I just loaded the IDE let's try that again all right visual studio 2017 folder and what we want is the x64 or the um, x86, your call, 32 or 64-bit. I'm gonna do 64-bit in this example. The x64 X command prompt. Now what we need to do is go to the folder in which we wish to do everything. So I'm just gonna go into my temp directory here and just do a, a git. Here, let me jack that up so you can see it a little bit better. All right, git clone and then paste that address in and press enter. Now, depending on your network connection speed, this is gonna take a minute or two, whatever. It's gonna download uh, about 200 megs, I think, of data from GitHub. Um, my connection's pretty fast, so I'll just keep babbling while it does this. Uh, this is basically just syncing the source code down from the GitHub server to your computer locally. Now, it's automatically gonna create the folder of Godot in whatever directory you specified, so when this is done, I will have c colon slash temp slash Godot. Almost done, that's the last tech I think, and we're done. So if I look, we now have a Godot folder. Let's change into it. And now here's where you need to have scons installed. Again, walk through it in the earlier process, so I'm not gonna go through it again. But what we wanna do is go scons, and then we pick our platform. So in this case, I'm doing Windows, tools equals yes. We wanna build the Godot editor, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the key one is module mono enabled equals yes. Now this is a kind of confusing process and I hopefully at some point in time in the future it is streamlined, but basically you have to build the Godot tools twice. First you build a special version that's capable of creating the C sharp bindings. You generate those bindings and then you build another version after. It's kind of ugly, but um, hopefully again sometime in the future this two part process goes away. So what we want to do is then say mono glue equals no. Like so. Let me just check over, make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Okay. And now we're gonna be basically running the build process. This takes a good 15 minutes on my particular computer. So I'm not gonna sit here and babble for 15 minutes. I'm gonna pause it and be back very shortly. Now, hopefully at this point, your build finished with no problems at all. And if that's the case, good for you. Let's continue on. Now, first off, let's look at what it actually generated for us. Let's just file up a, a copy of our file explorer or Windows Explorer and take a look at the generated files. You'll see in the bin directory, we have the godot.windows.tools.32 or 64 bit.exe, and then two critical um, mono related um, DLLs available for us there. So now what we want to do is head on back, and this is where it's gonna vary a little bit from the um, documentation as you see online. In that documentation there, you have a Godot executable in your root folder. In this particular case, you don't. So what we wanna do is change into the bin directory, like so. And now what we have to do is generate those C-sharp bindings. And to do that, we run Godot, whatever the name of your executable is, and we wanna run dash dash generate dash mono dash glue and then give it the folder. And this is also gonna vary a little bit from the instructions. You're gonna to wanna to go back a directory now, so dot dot slash, uh, module slash mono 
slash glue. Go ahead and run that. It'll open up a copy of Godot for a second and generate all of the bindings we need basically so that we can use C Sharp um, in the Godot API, kind of it's a mapping between the two languages. So if you look now in your Godot folder under modules, mono, glue, you'll see it generated a number of header files and a number of .cs files. And that's pretty much all we need. Now, unfortunately, we need to do the build one more time. So back in uh, your Godot folder, like so, run it for whatever platform you want. So what you want to do is scons. Uh, so in this case, platform equals Windows. Um, and then we want to do, let's see, target equals release underscore debug. I think if you do nothing, you'll get the same as setting that flag right there. Tools equals yes, we want to build the tools, basically the editor, etc. And module mono underscore enabled equals yes. The big difference here is we're not doing that mono underscore glue equals no flag. And let that build. This is basically going to build the tools again. It's going to take another 15 minutes. So I am going to pause, let it run this, and uh, see you back here in a couple of seconds. So ideally, your build is now complete. It worked out just fine. And let's go over to the bin folder and fire up our newly generated Godot uh, EXE. Now, it's called .opt now. I'm not actually sure that the naming convention there. Uh, but regardless, just fire that guy up. And we should now be good to go. You can see here in the background, uh, mono is initialized, runtime is initialized, and that all is good. And you see that? Well, you should be good to go. Let's test this out. So let's create a new project. Um, yeah, sure, whatever. We'll create that folder and create our project. All right, so here we are in Godot. I'm going to create the simplest of scenes, basically add a new node at the root. Uh, we will save it. Like so, we will run it and pick our root scene like so. Nothing too exciting so far. Now, if everything is working right in your Godot build, you should now be able to go in, do an attach script. And the key thing here is set C Sharp as your language. Now they're graying out the class name, which is a good thing because basically your file name has to match the class name. Uh, so if you name it, um, mynode.cs, it will be called mynode as the class name. When you're in the source code file, do not rename it. It has to match the name of the file. So your class name and your file name have to be the same. It's one thing to be aware of. But otherwise, welcome to C Sharp in Godot. Now, truth of the matter is you're probably not going to do too much development inside of Godot because there is no IntelliSense support here. You're going to probably be building it as a uh, library over in, say, Visual Studio or um, Visual Studio um, uh, code. Uh, both can be configured to be actually be run from your editor. One second, we'll look at that process. But first off, let's actually look at some code. So now that we can actually type in some code here, let's do GD. GD is like a global namespace. We'll look at that in a second when we load this up in Visual Studio and you'll see what I mean. But it allows us to call um, Godot script functions such as print. And we'll do the traditional hello world here and save and run. And hopefully everything works fine. Hopefully. All right, we just ran our code and look down here, you see hello world, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead, grab this guy over here and say show in file manager. We're just basically opening our project directory up and you'll notice it's actually created a solution file and a C-sharp project file for you. So if you wanna do your development in Visual Studio, you can. So let's fire that guy up. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll load our project up. Like so, you'll see here we have a single class named my node. Um, we're linking to Godot Sharp right there. Uh, we will uh, edit this guy. So you can see right here, you've got your standard callback. So you've got, uh, for example, if you want to have process, you can override it here. Uh, but all of the different um, callbacks that are available to GDScript are available to your library. So, um, so for example, I can go public override. And you see here we've got enter tree, exit tree, get init, um, input, notification, uh, process, set process, uh, etc. So basically all of the different callbacks you can handle in GD script, you can handle on the C sharp side of things. And then over here, you see, once again, we have that global namespace GD with all of the global defines. So, you know, button mass, button values, keyboard settings, etc. Um, and then again, you've got all of your various different uh, 
functions that are available in GDScript can be called this way. And you'll see if I type that out, we can see the parameters are a little bit confusing when you're dealing with it from this side. Now you gotta keep in mind, C Sharp is a typed language. Um, sorry, C, yeah, C Sharp is a typed language, GDScript is not. So you're going to have to be doing a lot of typecasting from this side. I'll show you a quick example of how we do some code here. So let's, um, let's bring this function back online. So this is called every pass to the game loop. This is your process. And let's go ahead and say if, and then we'll pick a do namespace, uh, input dot is key pressed, and we do gd dot key right. So if you press the right arrow key, run this code. And now what we might want to do is actually have something to work with. So let's head on back over to our editor. Here, this guy, we will uh, attach a child node to it of type sprite. Like this guy right here, uh, let's load a texture. We'll just use the uh, we could do icon as our example. Position it somewhere on the screen. Save our scene. And let's head back over to our code. So you see here now what I can do is say git node sprite. And here's where you're going to cast it. So this is going to come back as a node, but we've got to deal with it as um, a sprite. So we can basically do it as, um, we can do it like that if we so wished, or we could cast it back to a sprite object. Um, move local x by one. So this basically says, if you hit the right key, move ourselves by the right. Do a build here, which isn't necessary. Actually, Godot will do all the building for you. I just force of habit, to be honest. Uh, headed back over here. Uh, so if we check that we see our script, we'll have updated like so. Hit the run key. Project is now loading. And then if I hit the right arrow, we move. So that is how easy it is now to code in C Sharp code uh, from the Godot engine. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you can actually use different editors if you wish. So if you want to change out the editor, you go to the uh, editor, editor settings. Uh, we locate mono, should be in here somewhere. Mono, editor, right here. And you can change out your external editor in this drop down. So basically, we could say Visual Studio and have it fire off in Visual Studio, or we could do Visual Studio code. Um, that should be set. And now, if I double click this guy, cannot open script in overridden external text editor. Okay, so in theory, that's how you change out the editors. I'm not sure why that didn't work this time. Again, we are in um, pre-beta stage here, so um, it might be a mistake in my end or there might be a problem in the code right now. But ultimately, you are going to be able to swap out the editor that you use and have it open with uh, by setting the value here. And then supported editors are MonoDevelop, the Visual Studio that we used earlier in Visual Studio Code. Uh, as it stands now, you should be able to open the project in any one of those and work independently. So this is just the... Um, the double click to open in that language functionality seems to be broken for some reason, at least on the Windows platform. So hopefully that gets resolved soon. Anyways, that's it. That's all we're gonna cover today. I just wanna show you get up and running. You know, if that looked like a giant pain in the butt to you, uh, maybe just wait till there's a formal release. Uh, but this is ultimately how C Sharp is going to be supported in Godot. As you can see, it's a first class citizen. Attaching its script is simply a matter of right click, attach script. Um, all right, now I've borked my guy completely, so we'll just get out of there. But right click, select, uh, attach script, choose C sharp, and you're off to the races. Oh, that might be trying to open in the external editor, so let me just turn that back off. Go back to none, close that out. Right click, attach script. Yeah, I've broken things. All right, so don't do that. <laughs> don't do that for now, leave it alone. Uh, but really all you do is attach a script, choose the language that you need now. You're working in C Sharp. The only thing to keep in mind once again is your class name and your file names have to match up. So if your class is myclass.cs or my class, it needs to be in a file named myclass.cs. Uh, and you'll see it's located right there. Uh, you're gonna open up that simply. And once again, they're generating an SLN file and a CS project file for you. and you're off to the races. Now you don't need to use Visual Studio. As long as you have the build tools installed, it will call out to them for you. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you look forward to using uh, C Sharp with the Godot game engine. Um, I'm actually gonna probably do a tutorial uh, very soon. I'm gonna skip all this setup stuff, but basically I'm gonna look at creating a project in code um, using C Sharp as your language. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know down below. Um, again, this 
process should be streamlined. It's just because we are working with the development of builds at this time that we have to go through all of these hoops. Hopefully at some point in the future, they manage to get it down to a single compile. This two compile stuff is kind of annoying. Um, but ultimately that is the process to get up and running with Godot, or you can just wait a few weeks. Hopefully they'll ship a new update and it will have C-sharp support out of the box. Uh, but like I said, I will have um, another video up soon where we actually create a simple game using the C-sharp language. I love C-sharp. I'm happy to see this come along. I didn't have anything against Godot script, but C-sharp sort of is becoming the lingua franca for a lot of indie game development. Uh, so it is nice to see support happening. And for my coding experiences, I like working in a proper IDE. Nothing against the Godot editing environment, but I would much rather work in a Visual Studio type setting or Visual Studio Codes type setting. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do of course, please click like. And if you're into this kind of stuff, um, you know, we've got all kinds of game development stuff here on this channel. And if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button. And if you really like this stuff, um, check out my Patreon. That'd be really appreciated. All right, that's it for now. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you all later. Goodbye.